Hey everyone, welcome back to some new malicious compliance stories. I hope you had a great day. If you would like to help me grow this channel, please press the like button, it really helps in the algorithm. And if you haven't already, why don't you make this the video that you subscribe to the channel. And now let's start with the first story, shall we? The first story is called, don't threaten me with that. My aunt told me the story about my birthday recently. When my aunt was younger, around 18, she worked at a small clothes store before going off to college. During the two weeks she was there, after putting in her notice, she told her supervisor that my mother was pregnant with me and you any day. And that if she got a call from my father, she would leave during her shift. But she would come back after the birth and work what she was scheduled for the rest of her two weeks. Her manager agreed and said this was fine. Cue the day that she gets the call from my father that my mother had gone into labor. It was raining and because of this the store wasn't busy. The manager that was working wasn't her manager, but my aunt told her anyways that she had to leave and that the other manager had already approved it. And that she would come back the day after like her manager and her had agreed upon. The manager didn't like that answer. She argued with my aunt that there weren't enough people, even though it hadn't been busy and there was another employee besides the manager. She then argued that taking time off had to be signed off, which it had been by the other manager. Finally, my aunt told her that she was leaving anyway and the manager threatened her by saying if she left she would lose her job. My aunt told her that that was fine and that she wouldn't return at all and she didn't. Apparently, my aunt's manager was very annoyed at the other manager because she had mentioned it to the other manager. They had talked about it and the fact that it meant my aunt didn't work the rest of the two weeks. The next story is called, not essential enough for internet. I used to work as a broadcast technician on a cruise ship. Part of the job was running the passenger TV system and making sure the right thing was on the right channel at the right time. Most of the channels weren't pre-recorded programs, but four of them were live channels that we got off a satellite. The ship's satellite dish was supposed to automatically track the satellite as the ship moved. But when the ship would do a 180 degree turn pulling out of the port, the dish couldn't keep up. I would have to go to the broadcast room and manually retune the dish. This meant going onto the internet to look up the azimuth and elevation for the satellite, which was different depending on where we were on Earth. Without the AC and EL, I had no way to know which way to point the dish. To save money and bandwidth, one day the company decreed that between 8am and 8pm the ship's internet would be limited to the passenger's internet cafe and essential crew use only. The broadcast technician was one of the jobs not on the list of essential crew. I made a case to the cruise director and hotel director that this would cause problems if we lost the satellite dish during this time, but they were unconvinced. So I waited. A few days later, as we were pulling out of port around noon, the satellite dish lost contact with the satellite. I sent an internal mail to the cruise director and CC the hotel director to let them know that our satellite TV channels were down and that I would be able to get them back up just as soon as I had access to the internet at 8 pm that night. About 15 minutes later, I was CC'd on a mail from the hotel directly to the IT department. It said, please turn on the broadcast technician's internet access and add them to the essential crew list. You could send emails to addresses within the ship's network without a connection to the internet. But you couldn't send emails off the ship without a connection to the internet. The third story is called, that is all you need. I used to work at a well-known pet store a few years back and was the person my co-workers came to for any type of aquatic, reptile, aviary or small animal advice. I was in the back room cleaning out the cricket bins when one of the newer employees came up to me looking really frustrated. After talking about it, I learned that there was a woman on the floor who wanted to purchase our chocolate chip starfish. But apparently she knew nothing of saltwater tanks and was being unreasonable and had gone through two other associates already. I hated doing crickets so I gladly traded handling the Karen over that and ran my way to the floor. Finally, someone else who might actually help me, I want this one here. I looked in her cart and noticed a small box of aquarium salt and a 5 gallon tank. Sorry you were having trouble ma'am. Since I'm just walking into the situation though, we have a few questions we like to ask people before selling them live animals. So I just run through those with you quickly so we can get you on your way. Karen made an exaggerated sigh. Fine, whatever, hurry up. 
Perfect. So, what size is the saltwater aquarium setup you have at home and what fish do you currently have in it? Like I was telling the other kids, I don't have one already. Can you people listen? I have this one in my cart and the salt right here. I set it up when I get home. I want a starfish for my kids. That was literally all she had in her cart. Ignoring the fact that she was trying to cram the ocean into 5 gallons, she had no filters, heaters, substrate, heights, nothing. Got it. So, ma'am, the issue is that you need to have your aquarium set up ahead of time before you purchase a fish and that takes time. Also, a tank that size is not acceptable for any type of saltwater setup, so if you just follow me, I can show you what sizes you need. She follows me to the tanks and I point out a 55 gallon tank. Are you kidding me? Did you see the size of the starfish? No, I want this 5 gallon. Well, unfortunately, that is not an option. You'll also need more than just a tank and some salt. Fine, what do I need to get out of here? Here's where the malicious compliance kicks in. I grabbed another card and started grabbing all the basics you need to start a saltwater tank. For those of you who don't know, that is everything but cheap. She was following me around and kept trying to yell at me. But anytime she would say something, I'd interject with, oh, this tubing is on sale, good for you, or your children will love the substrate's color. And she would just get redder and redder in the face. About halfway through me getting the things she needed, totaling so far about $500, she yelled at me. For her, I was incompetent and abusing animals by not selling them to loving homes and then she stormed off. I put everything back with a huge grin on my face and called our sister locations to warn them about a potential Karen heading their way. The next story is called Bad Way to Get to the Hospital. I was a medic in Salt Lake for a few years. One rainy day, my partner and I got dispatched to a fairly upscale neighborhood on a call of chest pain. Chest pain means flashing lights and sirens. We quickly arrive in front of a pretty nice house and find a woman standing at the curb with two suitcases packed, already a red flag. I shut down the siren but kept the lights going for safety. We asked if she called 911 and she confirms. She steps into the ambulance, sits on the bench and asks us to get going. I tell her that we need to do a full workup before we leave to provide care on route and take her to the right facility. She says she doesn't really have chest pain, she has a procedure scheduled at the hospital. And she wants me to turn off the flashing lights so her neighbors don't notice and ask her questions. Obviously, this is EMS abuse and I tell her so. Suddenly her chest pain is back. So I say I need to get vitals and start an ECG. She protests again, mentioning the start time for her appointment in less than 30 minutes. And so I ask her point black, do you need medical attention or do we need the police? I proceeded to do a full workup in front of her house, taking my sweet time. I asked enough questions to make her eyes roll and left the strobe lights on the whole time so the neighbors would see. And she was late to her appointment because we admitted her to the hospital through the emergency room instead of the front doors. The last story is called Just Following Your Rules. It's coming up on the 5 year anniversary of this and I still don't regret it. Mom's reached the point where she laughs about it now so I figured it's time to tell the story. I love tattoos, my mom and dad hate them. They say it's damaging your body, permanent, pretty sure that's the point, blah blah blah. Mom would say, when you live on your own and pay your own health insurance, you can get a tattoo. So I went to school in Ireland for my bachelor's and grad diploma because I studied abroad, fell in love and never looked back. I wanted to commemorate my time there and remember it forever and what better way than a tattoo. I'd already gotten a second ear piercing before Christmas and only received an eye roll in response from both parents. But there were still those two little rules to consider. And here's where the malicious compliance kicks in. I took out my own student loans, no co-signer, so I was living in Ireland on my own money. Irish health insurance is separate from US insurance. And as an international student, mine was covered by the school, coverage which I paid for. So, conditions having been met, I got an Irish harp on my ankle based on a design I'd worn myself. I love it. Despite having technically followed her rules, mom was not happy and insists to this day that I should have been a lawyer. Extra kicker, the harp design was on a paper taped to my door at home. I asked mom if she could take a picture of it for me without telling her why. She was kind enough to take it off the door, scan it and email it to me. Thanks for watching the video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Please let me know what you think about the video in the comment section below. And now, I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.